Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. Uh, we are continuing our MTG keyword series and we're looking at companion this time. So what is this series about? In this series, we take a look at different keywords and mechanics introduced in different sets and kind of like explore the cards attached to them or that use them, I guess. So this is very similar to having a commander. Uh, we'll take a look at the bu best budget keywords fi finally. So yeah, here we go. All right, what is Companion? So this is a mechanic that was re re released in Ikoria, layer of the Behemoths. Companion uh, sets a deck building requirement on it that allows you to cast this as an extra card from its own zone. You do not have to use the Companion ability to have these cards in a deck. So you can't just put these cards in a deck like normal, or you can use the Companion. And Companion will say exactly like, you have to have 20 extra cards in your deck or you have to have all of your creatures have to be like this particular type of creature or uh, maybe some other but basically you'll have uh, one requirement that has to apply to your whole deck and then you can make this your extra card on the side after it is cast from the zone the phone the zone is effectively ceases to exist it cannot be returned to that zone and get cast again so this is something that sits kind of on the side of your board, which is very useful. It's basically like having an extra card in hand, so you can cast it at any time. Another rule that is attached to this is you can pay three to move it to your hand. So if you want it in hand for some reason, it's possible to do that for three extra. That is an ability that does not enter the stack as well, so that's kind of nice. Um, this mechanic is considered overpowered and panned by most critics. It is banned in several formats. So I would be careful if you're looking at uh, playing one of these, make sure it is legal in the format you're playing because many are not. Sound familiar? So this mechanic is very similar to how Commander works, sort of, yeah. Companion is also cast at any time from its own zone, just like, oh sorry, yeah, just like Commander. And uh, these both effectively give the player another card at, in the hand at the outset of the game. So this is, yeah, they're both basically like having an extra card that everyone can see at the outset of the game, which is still very good. The main difference is that companion cards do not return to their companion zone once cast. Right, commanders? Anytime it changes zone, you can put it back in the command zone and cast it again for two extra, the commander tax. And then, yeah. This, though, once it's cast and out, it's done. It does not go back, no matter what. Well, I guess you could start another game, but anyway. Honorable mentions, okay, uh, Gairuda, Doom of Depths, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but it's four and blue, uh, blue, black, blue, black, blue or black, I should say. So yeah, this is the Demir one. And the companion is starting deck contains uh, only cards with even converted mana cost. So that's a weird one, but. And when it enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of the library into the graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among the, them onto the battlefield under your control. So that is very powerful. It costs six for a six six. Not too bad. Six is expensive, but you're getting a six cents and probably another creature out of it. So uh, depending on what creature you get, I think it's probably worthwhile. Um, especially if you're playing a multiplayer format. This is a pretty safe bet, like you're going to get something. If it's only two player, milling four and getting a creature card that's an even converted, converted mana cost, maybe, maybe not, you know. Okay, next up, oh sorry, that's 24 cents. Yorian, Sky Nomad, is three and white or blue, white or blue, so this is our Azorius one. The companion says, uh, your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum minimum deck size. So this just isn't even possible with some formats, right? Like Commander, your deck is uh, 100 cards. There are ways to get extra cards that are legal technically, but yeah. This um, 
This would be very hard to pull off, I think. Especially with Azorius as your kind of like your shooting for. I don't know if it'd be worth doing in some formats, but anyway. Again, it is flying four or five, so that's not bad. And when it enters the battlefield, exile any number of non-land permanents you own and control. Return them to the battlefield under, at the beginning of your next end step. This can be a very useful card in a lot of, especially Azorius, doing like a blink thing and just getting a whole pile of ETBs can be extremely useful. It's also nice because it's just non-land permanent. So artifacts, um, enchantments, all kinds of things, you can potentially get another ETB or some kind of other effect off of that, them entering again. So yeah, it can be very, very useful. Anywho, 38 cents. And finally, Lutri the Spell Chaser. So this is our uh, Is It One? One blue, red, blue, red, blue or red, I mean, of course. For a 3-2, 3 for a 3-2 with flash, that's uh, better. Anyway, the companion is uh, each non-land card in your starting deck has a different name. Okay, again, um, Commander Singleton rule, right? This is actually banned in Commander. You cannot use this in Commander, unfortunately. So yeah, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. Okay, so yeah, you're just copying a spell uh, in instant or sorcery. Can uh, be kind of a combo piece in a whole bunch of things. This was way overpowered in Commander, which is part of why it got, you know, banned out pretty quickly. Um, anyway, 19 cents. Number five, Kahira the Orphan Guard. Uh, this is our Selesnia here. So one green or white, green or white. Uh, for a three, two with Vigilance. Hmm. It's companion. Each card in your starting deck is a cat, elemental nightmare, dinosaur, or beast card. Each creature you control that's a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast gets plus one, plus one, and has a vigilance. I actually had this recently in our, uh, uh, well, Leonin slash cat series for the, uh, the anthem effects. That's a really nice anthem effect. Most anthem effects are not that flexible, where they apply to what is it? Cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, beast, Five different creature types it can affect. That's actually pretty crazy. Uh, the companion thing is probably the, one of the easiest to fulfill as well. It's just so much flexibility, especially elemental. I've done a series on elementals as well. So yeah, you can uh, pretty easily do a like elemental slash cat deck or element or yeah, elemental slash anything deck and uh, use him as well. Or her, I'm not sure, but whatever. Anyway. And yeah, giving everything plus one, plus one, and vigilance is a lot better than it sounds. Vigilance is, I think, usually kind of okay. It's not great, but when everything has it and a nice little plus one, plus one, that's there. But everything having vigilance is just, that really changes kind of how combat works overall. If you've got Vigilance on everything, you just kind of don't have to like factor blocking into your attacking decisions at all. It It's very, uh, really changed the dynamic there. Anyway, 38 cents. Number four. Uh, Gigantha, Gigantha, Gigantha. I don't know, I can't say things. The Wellspring. For four and red or green, this is a gruel. It's a 5-5 five, five for 5. Again, not bad. Companion, no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol in its mana cost. Getting a little more weird though. Um, I'd say this isn't very hard to do, but it's gonna end up, I think, be a lot more limiting than you expect it to be. Anyway. He can tap to add 
One mana, colored mana of every color, this mana can't be spent to pay generic mana costs. So you actually have to use the mana as the mana color symbol. You can't just be like, okay, uh, if I want to cast a red, let's say it's four and a red, just tap them, go. No, nope. you can pay the red only. Still quite useful in a lot of decks. I think any Wooberg deck is happy to see this. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and just being able to create five different colors of mana all on one creature, especially it's red green is such a nice flexible kind of like cost requirement for a, a mana dork. Having a mana dork that you can cast pretty easily, is at least when it comes to like types of mana wise and it just opens the door to everything. Um, I, this is the only card I know of like this really. Anyway, 96 cents. Number three. Zerda the Dawnwalker. I actually just did a deck or a budget deck on this. I think it's actually really good. Um, so one and red or white, red or white are Boros, three, three. And its companion is each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability. This I think sounds, once again, sounds not as hard as it would end up being. Everything having an activated ability is uh, a bit of a nightmare to assemble. Um, kind of do you want that many even? I think as a commander, Zerda is much better, but anyway. Abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana cost to less than one mana. That's crazy good, right? Remember, abilities cannot be countered like spells. Most decks might have some ability countered, they won't have a whole like pile of it. And to be able to deal with Zerda, then you'll probably need a whole pile of it. Also affects like, I in the uh, deck tech, I used High Noon, which only allows each player to cast one spell per turn. So you're pretty much just like setting yourself up to be able to like cast a whole bunch of, or you uh, activate a whole bunch of abilities and then uh, just uh, cast one spell. You're happy. Everyone else is a real hindrance and for you, it's probably fine, right? Anyway, also for pay one and tap target, tap, then target creature can't block this turn. That I think is underrated as well. There's so many times where you go, oh, if that one thing couldn't block, then hey, I'd be golden and now you can. Anywho, 35 cents. Number two. Oh Bosh, the Prey Piercer. Um, <clears throat> Your starting deck contains only cards with odd converted mana costs and land cards. So we had even converted mana costs. This is the odd one for our, uh, ba -ba -ba. Rakdos, that's the word. Um, three, black, red, black, red for a three, five. Okay. If a source you control with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or a player, it deals double that much to that permanent or player instead. Okay, a source, right? Not a creature, not an instant, not a, a source. So anything you've got pretty much that deals damage, if it has an odd converted mana cost, if it's an instant, if you got lightning bolt, lightning bolt's one mana, that's odd, great. Then you're doing double damage with lightning bolt. It's one mana for six damage then. Um, this is, uh, not the hardest thing to fulfill, but super valuable. I also like this because it is it's only is uh, it's only helping you, it's not hurting you, right? Some of these double, damage doubling effects can be used against you as well. This one is only helping you and only helping things that have that odd converted mana cost. So very easy to kind of like all of a sudden run away with the game. Anyway, 13 cents only. Crazy. Oh, please hit like and subscribe. It really does help. Number one. Lurus of the Dream Den. Uh, probably a lot of people saw this coming. For a one and white or black, white or black, the Orzhov one now. 
It's a 3-2 for 3. Not bad. It has lifelink too, that's always nice. Each permanent card in your starting deck has mana value 2 or less. Is this companion requirement? Not hard to do with Orzov. Orzov is a very good color for that low converted mana cost. That's for sure. And remember, it's permanent cards, right? So if you've got instants or sorceries that cost above that, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a permanent spell uh, mana value 2 or less from your graveyard. So your graveyard, you can just keep throwing things back in the, the battlefield from the graveyard once per turn. So, oh sorry, once during each of your turns. Um, it, it's a very uh, Orzhov ability. I think Orzhov is a very good color to have that with. Anyway, yeah, 78 cents. The list, okay, Kahira the Orphan Guard is 38 cents. Gigantha the Wellspring, I think I said it right, 96 cents. Zerda the Dawn Waker is 35 cents. I keep saying Dawn Walker instead of Waker. So if I said it, sorry about that, I'm trying to not do it. Obosh the Prey Piercer is 13 cents. Kinda, I think thematically the most like on point for me, at least appearance wise, maybe art wise, it's the most on point. Loras of the Dream Den is 78 cents. This is the probably the most like Orzov one, right? The one that's really like matches the theme, but anyway, take it easy.